Damn. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I just got, I just got back from seeing Bullet Train. Oh, wow. That was a good movie, dude. That was a damn good movie. I liked it a lot. I'm so pumped up right now, man. Okay. So, Bullet Train takes place on a bullet train in Japan, and essentially the movie focuses on all these different characters and them coming together. Now, obviously, these aren't just normal people. Each one of them is special, and I think the trailers give it away. They are all, um, well, they're all, they're, most of them are killers, basically. They're assassins. Assassins, killers, they work in the underworld, and all these people from the underworld are gathering on this one train due to all these different story threads and coincidences, okay? That's what the film is built on, coincidences, but they're not contrivances, because the film takes us through the coincidences, if that makes sense. There are plot points, there are story threads in this movie that we don't really think about too much, but then at later points in the movie, they show us the whole story and how these threads end up connecting together, but it's not contrived, like I said. It feels natural, and that's the best part of the movie, you know? It feels natural. The only reason why there's coincidences, coincidences, all right, is because of specific, uh, of specific character trait in our main character played by Brad Pitt, dude. It's freaking Brad Pitt, man. Ah! Golly, ah, Jesus. Honestly, I only recall one story thread that I don't think got properly resolved, and it's mainly because, uh, I mean, it's, there's not a reason for it, it's just kind of unfortunate that it didn't get resolved, but it's present, the story thread's presence means something in the film as it clues us, as it foreshadows things that happen later in the film, so I still appreciate it nonetheless, I just wish it could have done something more, I mean, it did do something, but the issue is that when when it does do something, it doesn't. Its effects don't really matter that much. It's just kind of used for a funny gag thing. But Brad Pitt is—he's a, a funny ass dude. He is funny in this movie. I think I literally saw—I saw it with my friend. Okay, so and his dad uh, described it like such. He was a fan of when Brad Pitt gets to play the fool. Now Brad Pitt's an awesome guy. I mean, we've all seen—we've all seen Troy, of course. Brad Pitt's. He's freaking, he's hunky, man. He's a cool dude. But he's really funny when uh, he gets to play more uh, funny characters, which I assume is one of the bigger flaws that some people might have with this movie. It's it's definitely quippy, uh, but not like Avengers quippy. It's just got a very punkish tone throughout the movie. I mean, it is Japan, I guess, you know, so. <laughs> a lot of bright colors, a lot of snappy dialogue, but... The thing is, I think this movie uses its snappy dialogue really well. There's a character in this movie that has a specific character quirk. Okay, now the thing is, the thing about character quirks is that if they're not played right, they can kind of just seem like they're coming out of nowhere. But the thing about this character quirk is that as we learn more and more, as the movie contextualizes what this character quirk means, um, it means more and more throughout the film. And it slowly has more impact when this character quirk comes into play. And towards the climax of the film, it leads to one of the most genuinely heartfelt moments. Like, I, I freaking teared up, man. That was, ugh, Jesus. I, I, I got sad, but, but ultimately, uh, oh yeah, forgot to mention one more thing. The freaking cinematography, cinematography on this film is, it, it's damn good. Because, like I said, no thread is really left unanswered necessarily. Every single thread matters. Every single action matters. So the way this film is shot is that every single movement is captured very heavily. Every time a character grabs something or does any kind of action, the camera always makes sure to quickly zoom on that action and maybe cut away. But there's a good sense of spacing in this movie, and that's important in my opinion. Because it means that whenever a character does something, it doesn't feel too out of the ordinary. Now, the climax of this film is pretty ridiculous, but honestly, I think it. I, I do think it works well. Honestly, I think it earns that ridiculousness at the end of the day. Um, but other than that, uh, every single character matters. Every single character plays a role. Even the ones that don't really receive development, like. Uh, pretty key player in the film that isn't really revealed until like about the second act of the movie but its presence is foreshadowed and um crap i 
I'm gonna have to cut this out. Oh well, damn it. Its presence is foreshadowed, and um, but yeah, basically, even characters that spoiler alert, uh, real quick. Uh, characters do die in this movie. It's a movie about char about underworld uh, workers, essentially, uh, meeting together on this one bullet train. So somebody's gonna die. Even characters that die at the beginning of the film matter because, in some way, shape, or form, they do impact the plot because they take up a space on this train. And if something's on this train, it matters. Even the smallest thing, which this film uses in one of the most hilarious. Uh, hilarious uh, reveals and not to mention uh, small lines matter as well so you gotta pay you gotta listen close attention you gotta pay close attention I wish I could have watched this movie with English subtitles at the honestly because some of the things that some of the things that are spoken with for, in this movie happen real quick but other than that damn holy cow okay you gotta see this movie it's good it's real good